landscapers, we've got your back at the Home Depot. Razorback, durable pro-grade landscaping tools for the toughest projects. And just to make your job easier, buy four or more Razorback tools now and you'll save 20%. Your crew will have the best tools in the industry. And you, you'll have savings you can take to the bank. With bulk pricing on Razorback tools, buy four or more, save 20%. Now at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing, while supplies last. Welcome to Define You Radio, the place to be for real talk and real tips to help you define your personal and professional life. Class is in session with your host, the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Pens and papers ready. Class is now in session. Yes, hello and welcome to Define You Radio, classes in session, where you get the life lesson strategies and more to teach you how to define life on your own terms. In case this is your first time listening to Define You Radio, number one, thank you. And I am your host, the Southern Belle of Bold Valencia Griffin Wallace. Yes, I say the whole government name. So it's easy for you to find me. In other words, make sure you are connected and subscribed to all things Define You, including Define You Movement on Facebook, where class is in session seven days a week. You can find out more at defineuradio.com or just go to Define You Movement on Facebook. With that being said, y'all know I'm all about the unapologetic, unleashed, unique things of life. I'm all about the you in Define You. And this month, we are talking about unapologetic living, which, you know, I love. That's like a hashtag. Class is in session tonight with a beautiful queen that I met in my travels in New York last year, Rizmia Johnson of Eloquent Essentials. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Riz, as I call her. And I'm sure once you get to know her and hear the interview, you're going to be referring to her as Riz also. So a little bit about her. She is the CEO of Eloquent Essentials. She's also the founder and executive director of Eloquent Essentials Youth Scholarship Program. So not only is she a businesswoman, she's a businesswoman out to help others with this youth scholarship. I wish I was a youth, okay, but I'm not, so I can't do the scholarship. But you guys can. If you know a youth, she's going to tell you more about that. So before I say anything else about that, I don't want to ruin the the surprise and what she has to say about that. So a little bit more about Riz. She uses Eloquent Essentials as a platform to inspire and encourage not only the girls that she mentors, but others as well, to learn about, highlight, and really celebrate that beauty that we all have within us. And we that's part of of Define You is taking that beauty within, recognizing it for what it is, and learning how to use that in your everyday life to change the lives of not only you and your family, but others. She wants her life to display what passion and purpose creates, and she definitely does that with everything eloquent. That's all I have to say. So with that being said, enough of my voice. Let's go ahead and welcome Rizmia to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, (laughs) Rizmia. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I um, am so humble and grateful. You know, we usually have our sister girl empowerment talk, but it is I consider this a blessing to uh, be able to just be here and conversate with you this evening. So thank you. Well, thank you for for coming on the show. I am delighted to have you on, and I'm gonna tell you guys a little, you know, personal thing with Riz. When I say she is one of the few people that 
is so genuine and authentically supports another woman. A lot of times we we see the sayings, you know, women empower women, women um, support women, and all of this stuff. But let's be honest, a lot of times that's not reality. And she's one of the few people I see her supporting others, including me, and just, just doing it. And I do believe that's why one of the reasons why your business is so successful, people don't understand, like, when you support others, like, that's planting a seed in in others, and, and you often reap the harvest. So I want to just thank you for that part. I just had to, you know, drop the mic on, on that little stuff. So uh, just thank well, you thank for being you. you. Thank you. I, I'm telling you, I'm trying to be the master of being me because when you try to be somebody else, you get all confused. You know, they be done changed up and people be trying to be somebody else and then they get all mixed up. So if you master being you, then you'll be all right. That's what I, that's what I believe. And I just try to be authentic. My thing is I love seeing my sisters win. I love seeing people win, but I specifically love seeing my sisters win. I love to see the youth winning. And, um, you know, anything that I could do in support of another person, I'm sure enough going to do it, you know. I don't have time to be no crab in the barrel. You know, we always have to lift each other up, and that's real important. You know, because if you pull somebody down, just remember somebody else is going to be there to tug on your toe. So, you know, mm. I'm trying to elevate. <laughs> Riz is dropping mics early in the show. And I love that <laughs> master, master being you and, you know, everything. And that's that's who you are. So let's get into a little bit about your backstory. So why don't you tell us about your life? growing up and what got you to the journey to Eloquent Essentials, I guess? Well, um, I was raised by my grandmother, um, who plays an intricate part in my life. My mother's mom raised me. She had me uh, from when I came home from the hospital. You know, my mom was a teen mom, so... Therefore, she needed that help and support. And, you know, just growing up, I'm the oldest grandchild, so I grew up being like the sibling of my aunts and uncles and then being like the cousin slash aunt, I guess, for my um, my cousins that were born after me. And that's on my mother's side, you know, because I was raised with her. But I just grew up, and my grandmother, I saw her strength. She was a woman that was very creative, and she always taught me structure, you know, so she was like, I remember when I first um, started working, she was like, she teaching me the whole component of breaking down my check, like, okay, this goes here, this goes here, this goes to the bank, and so forth. So, I mean, her influence, uh, really weighs heavily on who I am as a woman today. Um, I think that my entrepreneurial wit definitely comes from her because I saw her, like, you know, my grandmother, she didn't have, like, the whole bachelor's and master's degree, but I saw how she was able to pull it together for her family. You know, she cooked, like, anyone that knows my grandmother knows she cooks her butt off. So she would cook, sell dinners out of the house. She knew how to sew, so she was a seamstress. You know, back in the days before the perms, you know, we had that little um, straightening comb, so she would be pressing and curling people here. And I saw her do so many things. So growing up, I knew in watching her, you can always create an outlet to start your own business. And so, like, as a child, I would start doing party favors, I would try doing my friend's hair. I used to crochet, babysit, you know, so you do all of those things, and they generated revenue, and, you know, one thing led to the other. Mm. Love that. With question, with your grandmother raising you, did you have a relationship with your mother? Um, yes, I had a relationship with my mother and my father, you know, like I, I knew both of them, you know, 
and both of them love me dearly. I'm, I'm thankful, you know, to have the parents. You know, growing up, you experience uh, certain obstacles in life. Um, you know, and my mother and my father had certain situations and challenges within their life that didn't allow them to be, I guess, as effective in my life as we as children yearning certain things would have liked. But, you know, growing up, I had a lot of resentment towards my mother and my father. Um, but as I matured as a woman, I understand that they were not in their right space of mind at times, so therefore they couldn't mm-hmm. be the 100% that I, you know, wanted or what we visualize as a perfect parent. But I'm thankful as a grown woman now um, that God allowed my mother and my father to get together to create me because it is through their DNA that I'm developed, and I know, you know, I don't, what they say, the apple don't fall kind of far from the tree, or their blood right. is in my DNA. So I take the best components of my mother and my father, and um, I elaborate on that and the things that um, I'm not so happy about with them growing up, you know, I make sure I use those as turn uh, as teachable lessons and uh, make sure that I don't do those same things, <laughs> you know, getting high, yeah. drinking, <laughs> and stuff like that. And you know what? I love your perspective with that. Um, you know my story and various people, especially if they've read the book, Motherless Child, know, you know, my story growing up. And there is a lot of resentment when everybody else seems to have, quote, unquote, normal parents. Um, Mm -hmm. and then when you, when you, to me, you have to grow into forgiveness. And as I started to grow into forgiving them, I learned, I focused on the good things I got from them versus the, the bad. So that's, you have, you know, like my, my creative talents, as far as writing, drawing different things that came directly from, you know, my mom and my dad. So when you look at your parents, what what can you see in in your life as far as like now that came directly from them on the good side? Okay, well I learned after my um, father's death that you know um, he was like a, a entrepreneur, always selling different things, like had that hustle mentality. So. Like I said, that's in my DNA. You know, in regards to my mother, my mom, you know, she she was an ambitious person, and she, you know, she was a lovable person. Like my mom, she's always smiling. She's always, you know, encouraging others. So I would say I pulled that from them, you know. Um, I don't, like, I'll, I, like, talk, reflecting back on my childhood, I could say, like, you know, the whole late 80s and the early 90s, you know, people were getting high, you know, especially in the African-American communities, crack cocaine and jerry curls. That's what I call that time frame because it was like every crackhead had jerry curls. Everybody had jerry curls and, you know, crack cocaine was in. But, you know, their prayer pressure and what they had to deal with, taught me too because what I resented um, in my parents is what strengthened me today. So it's like mm. people be like, oh, you don't drink no wine? I'd be like, no, nah, I don't fool with none of that. You don't smoke no cigarettes? No, nah, I don't fool with that neither. I don't snort. I sure enough don't like no needles because when I go to the doctors, I tell them you got one time to get this needle in. <laughs> to get it right. You the blood. So, so I, know, I know that definitely couldn't be it. But, yeah, I would say that my father's entrepreneur wit and my mom's just love and support of other people. So, as you you know, you know me. I'm an entrepreneur, and I have a love for people. So I'm thankful for those characteristics from them. Well, yay. I'm thankful for them, too. <laughs> and that, that yeah. leads us into the, uh, the next part of the conversation With your, and if you guys listen to the show or have had a conversation with me, you know I struggle with the word entrepreneur. 
entrepreneurial. I mess it up, jack it up every time. So I just say business, okay? So okay. I'm telling you, I jack the word up. I don't know why. Me and this word, yeah. So let's talk about eloquent essentials. Okay. What exactly is eloquent essentials for those that don't know? Well, Eloquent Essentials is a accessory company that specializes in both fashion and fine jewelry. It's affordable for uh, the average person that loves to look wealthy but, you know, don't want or don't have the money to pay and invest. And what I've learned is even in fashion and clothes, you can look real fashionable and stylish. It doesn't always mean that you have to pay an arm and a leg in your life savings to do it. So in Eloquent Essentials, you know, that's what it presents to people. It also, I've, through Eloquent Essentials, have been able to afford uh, other women the opportunity to come on board as independent consultants where they can get an extra stream of income to help in their household, their families, their pockets. You know, it's also afforded me the opportunity through my mentorship to be able to teach some young people um, certain components when it comes to the accessory business, which is very lucrative, um, with, especially in the United States. Like, it, you can make so much money off of accessories. If you think about anything, if you're going to put on a dress, you got to put on shoes. If you're going to go out, you're going to make sure that you have your jewelry to accommodate it. So it's like it goes hand in hand with everything. So that's what Eloquent Essentials is about. It's about providing affordable jewelry um, at a reasonable price for all. And you have some very unique, beautiful pieces, and and I love it. And I love that you have independent consultants. So most of the time people will look at companies like, you know, Paparazzi or um, Tracy Lynn or whatever, you know, companies, and by the time we really, quote, unquote, see them, they already have like 100 consultants or whatever else. So you're you're like, you know, this is like a almost like a ground floor opportunity to not only help Eloquent Essentials grow, but to really help women because that's in your heart. So me and you yes. may need to come uh, have a conversation. I would just look, well, all you, my commission would be going towards uh, buying jewelry. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say this. You know, um, I have I have friends that sell paparazzi jewelry, and, you know, I have mm-hmm. friends that sell Tracy Lynn, you know, and I applaud them. Like, like I in our conversation outside of this, as I was explaining to you, I started Eloquent Essentials because I started a new job where I had a whole bunch of time. And um, I, had, I, was, I was wondering what should I do. Should I invest my time in commitment to working for another job to generate revenue for me, or should I start my own business? And I prayed to God. I was like, God, just, just direct me on what I need to do. You know, like, whatever, God, whatever way you lead me, that's the way I'm going to go. And so I prayed about it. You know, I prayed from the name to the mission statement to how I visualized it. And as I was praying about it, um, you know, my heart was placed with in, in Matthew about God giving people gifts and talents. And, you know, he gave one person, one man, five talents. He gave the other one three talents and one one talent. And in my prayers, I said, God, if you give me a gift and a talent to be successful, to be able to establish generational success, generational wealth, I promise that I will be able to multiply what it is. So that's why I like to – I don't want to be unselfish in it, you know. So that's why the independent consultants came on board because the one thing about success, regardless to how much people may browse about how they did this, a self-made millionaire. No success is done by itself. And I always say, Mm -hmm. the person that thinks that they're able to prepare, to hunt their food, prepare their food, put it on the table and all of that, all you're going to do is become obese. I'm not trying to eat alone. Mm -hmm. Obesity keeps you complacent. 
But if you sit up wow. there and you break the food that you get, and we, you like they say, you know, I got bread in my pocket. You know, if you're breaking bread and you sharing it with people and everybody yeah. eating, that's success. Because what's going to happen yeah. is that person is going to go harder for you because they're like, you know what? I'm eating with Riz. Yo, sis, you need to learn about the this and that. And it, and it helps your business grow. And that's how Eloquent Essentials started. So then I was like, okay, thank you, God, for that. I'm doing this. And then I learned about Tracy Lynn. And I was like, oh, wow, is a sister doing this too? So then I was like, oh, God, you got me. You got me going. It served as encouragement. I just learned about mm. paparazzi with my childhood friends. She's doing very well. An executive director, I saw it today. Um, doing paparazzi, and I applaud her. Like I said, this business and accessories is a lucrative business. It's enough for all of us to eat. So I'm not looking at what she's making in her pocket. I'm looking at the level of success. That way we can win together. So as we elevate, mm. and I'm going, you know what, Valencia, you winning. That's right, sis. You know, it's good to see a familiar face when you rising. So that's, yeah. you know. Without me going on. Girl, I was too much. Oh, yeah. Riz is <laughs> dropping mic left, right, and sideways. Y'all know classes and sessions. So I hope your pens and papers are moving because that obesity keeps you complacent. Comment almost just ended the show. I was like, Cause there's <laughs> nothing, nothing left to say after that. Mm-hmm. But you, I mean, go hard, Riz. Go hard. I'm just saying. I, I love it because. Yeah. That 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 whole spirit of we all can eat, we all can all eat. Can eat. And and people don't realize that, especially women. And you talk about accessories. My jewelry box is ridiculous. And number one, I'm southern. I don't know if it's a southern thing, but I'm not leaving out the house without a pair of earrings. <laughs> and particular, you know, and I grew when I went to um school for computers many, many years ago, I learned um, the five, I call, I think it's like a five jewelry rule, like when you go in um, public or do business or blah, blah, and blah, you know, five pieces of jewelry. So, um, which that's random. I don't know if that still holds true today. This was back in the 90s. I learned that. But yeah, we Mainly all people. have jewelry on. Yeah, rather is that one pair of earrings we wear, whether it's, um, you know, ring, a bunch that of bracelet, rings, that that bracelet. Watch, yeah. And necklace. And I'm, jewelry has been around since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been around since the beginning of time. So, yeah. hashtag and amen. It's not, hashtag amen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's there right. Is. So, being being in the in this industry, it puts you in in a room, in in the rooms where there's not too many people that look like you. I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it puts me How, like. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was saying it. It definitely does. Like I know with me. Um, I go to, like, different, like, the actual diamond shows, the trade shows where there's a mass um, manufacturing companies there that's looking, like, these are the people that sell the jewelry to your local jewelry stores and to your local businesses and stuff like that. And when you go there, it's not a lot of brown faces in there. I mean, you definitely are spotted out. (laughs) But hmm. what I have learned in doing, um, in attending and going to these events is while we are, well, me as an African-American woman is few, it also um, helps me because it's like people look at, when you're doing business, people watch how you do business, you know, hmm. in regards to establishing good business relationships, you know, not that you're looking out to hustle them or whatever. So, like, when you go to those places, yeah, they looking to see what volumes you move in, um, how you are, you know, because, like I said, Eloquent Essentials is a maturing 
a business, you know. So we're not right. on a large scale, and I'll say yet because it's growing. Yeah. But those relationships and those bonds that I've made, you know, where even late nights, when it's 12 o'clock at night here, and I'm talking to my business partner in China, you know, we're communicating mm. and connecting, or you connecting with people in India and all of these different things. See, those are the behind-the-scenes things of being a businesswoman and making those certain moves. So, yeah, it's far and few, <laughs> but... I'm thankful. I'm thankful and to be here. To me, like that almost gives you an an advantage, so to speak, because you're noticeable. You don't have to walk in a room and make your way. If if you walk in the room and it's you know that's like an ad, advantage. Like okay, I didn't kick the door. It's in. I didn't kick the door in. I'm here. So let me bring some people with me. You know what I'm saying? Like we always got to have somebody kick the door in and leave the door open. And that's definitely what you're doing because sometimes people are intimidated when they walk in the room and they don't see faces that look like theirs. So you're setting an example in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you a funny thing Um, in in being all honest. There was a time Mm -hmm. where I I was intimidated by it. Right, and it was just mm-hmm. like matter of fact, it was my first time <laughs> going to one of these events that I got intimidated, and I learned that there's energy in your vibe, like God will place you where you're supposed to be, period point blank, yeah, and when i first like when I first went to um my first event, and I went there and I seen all of these you know different faces and stuff like that, I was like, "Oh wow, I got intimidated, like what questions you ask, like how do you do this and that and it's a lear- it's a learning process, right, but I was mm-hmm. saying when i when I left the venue, I was like, "Oh, I wasn't even supposed to be there." I'm not even I'm a small business owner da 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 you know, and I was saying so much negative stuff. To where when it was time to for their next event, then it was like, okay, they was like, oh, well, in order for you to be able to attend the next event, you have to present this, 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 that, and the third. And I panicked because I was like, yo, how am I going to send invoices for <laughs> that I purchased this amount of quantity of work and I'm mean, of jewelry and this and, and, and have this business card? But what I will say is God prepared me. So everything that they had asked for, I was able to present. I had my catalog already. I I had a few. I had two catalogs. I had um, large um, production. I had invoices because that's when I had first did my signature pendant for Eloquent Essentials. So I had that invoice. You know, I already had my business, a certificate license, doing business as, had credit cards. So all of that was some of the requirements. And then I was like, oh, wow. So once God gave me the pass on that, by the next event, I was walking in there like, yeah, I belong here. (laughs) I'm not Mm. trying to put negative (laughs) energy in there. And now when it when it comes to me attending there, I go there, you know, you partner up with a few people, you're exchanging numbers, you're learning certain things learning about what's coming out next and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm I'm everywhere I'm supposed to be on every day that it's, I'm supposed to be, and and I'm thankful. <laughs> and even I, if I, I ain't that. show up, I'm thankful. <laughs> so you talking are like a, your destiny is important. You, you are such like a, a quiet mini storm. You know what I'm saying? Like a, like a, <laughs> Because I I remember, and to kind of flash back a little bit, um, I met Riz at the Embrace Your Cake conference last year in New York, which it was rainy, and I didn't get to tour or see anything, but it was still a a, a great time. And we sat at the table, and it's a whole story behind it, and we'll have to have another show and maybe get the the half All eight of us. On the on the show, all eight of us on the on the show, which uh, that have to be a two hour special. So my uh, mm-hmm. hashtag eights that are listening, um, just know that's coming up. But 
we all sat at a table and we just vibed and we talked and I was hungry and I wanted some food and we all ended up eating and and connecting and praying yes. over each other. And it was yes. eight of us. So that's where the uh, hashtag eight comes in, especially if you guys are connected with me or Riz or any of the eight, which is the number for new beginning. Right? So yes. if you yes. see that hashtag eight, you ain't going to see it on everybody's post. You'll only see it when another eight is talking to an eight or coming uh, commenting on an eight or the picture, which all of right. us kind of put our hands in and took a picture. That was a powerful life changing moment. But I say all that to say Riz was quiet at the, at the table, <laughs> you know, <laughs> look, I had to go all the way around to get back there. And I know some of the eight are definitely uh, listening and y'all, it, you know, when, when, Two or more, and we were more, agree. And I'm going to tell you, connect with with those unapologetic living, unapologetic connecting, all that unapologetic stuff. Get with some women or men, if you're a man, that that mm-hmm. y'all can text in the mornings and get each other mind right. They, they're going to war with you. They're going to talk with you. Like, that is so important in life, and I didn't realize what I was missing until I got it. Now back to the show. (laughs) (laughs) Now back to the show. So let's talk about, you know, I had to go in. I said that's a whole other show. We're going to have to do that one. But um, let's talk about E-E-Y-S-P. What does that stand Mm -hmm. for and what is it all about? E-E-Y-S-P um, was birthed out of Eloquent Essentials, which is my accessory line. E-E-Y-S-P means Eloquent Essentials Youth Scholarship Program. Um, it was birthed in the seventh year of Eloquent Essentials existence. Um, I was led by God to do it. Uh, I, 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 in mentoring and also working and being involved with several youth organizations, you know, I saw that our children are influenced heavily on different things. And what mm-hmm. I've observed is society teaches our children how to chase riches versus establishing generational wealth. And while we all say, yeah, I want to be rich, um, Right. I've learned I've learned that it's important to be wealthy. Uh, wealth is generational, right. which you can pass on, or, with it, you know, it surpasses you. So you can pass it on to your children, your children can pass it on to their children, and so forth. Whereas with riches, if you buy a nice car, you buy the right now uh, clothing, you'll spend a good penny for it, but then right. it depreciates. You know, and then you can't, you can't pat like it's not passing on any value. So with generational wealth, you're able to pass it on. And that's why I started that because what happens is you teach children how to start their own businesses, to tap into their intellectual genius, to be able to expand on these visions, these ideas that they have, and support them, mentor, and guide them. So that way they can be great. They could be tomorrow's leaders. They could establish their generational wealth. They'll be able to pass on. You know, legacy is continuous, so they'll be able to do it. And um, through God's grace, we was able to raise $7,000 to split amongst two recipients of the APOTS Award and two recipients of the GEMS Award. And I feel that Like, it was good timing because also, like, with the APOTS Award, APOTS is an award that's near and dear to not only me but to my family because it allows us a way of continuing the legacy of my young cousin, Adrian Potts, whose life was abruptly taken, you know, um, due to gun violence. And it wasn't, you know, he just happened to be at the, wrong place, you know, people act stupid, and unfortunately his life was cut short. So 
in that and knowing, like, my cousin was so intellectual. So, like, he was far beyond his time. It was, like, his genius. Like, to talk to him, you know, he talked on stuff that I have you as a grown person, like, wow. You know, and he was always, like, this entrepreneur. Like, yo, Riz, I'm doing this. I'm selling tickets to this. I'm doing that. And I love that about him. So when the scholarship program was uh, developed, you know, again, through prayer, God led me to name the Young Entrepreneur Award as the APOTS Award. And APOTS means ambitious person overtly trying to succeed. And that's what I saw in my cousin, an ambitious person that was definitely always trying to succeed. So in that award, that award uh, is for a young entrepreneur that is um, between the ages of 10 and 19 that lives in the tri-state area of New York, which is New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. You know, education is always key. My cousin was great, you know, like I said, educated. And so, like, you have to have a certain GPA. There's certain things that, you know, guideline requirements that are outlined on the website, eeysp.org, and that's one of the awards. So our recipients last year was a young man named Morgan Henry, and then there was two, uh, he does photography, and he um, also does, like, the airbrushing of bags and so forth. And then you have uh, the twins, which is Savannah and Samaya, who started their tie-dye T-shirt um, business because, they didn't get a summer job, so they created their own stream of business, and I love it because I started babysitting when I was at 12 years old, so I love that. And then the other component of the EEYSP scholarship is the GEMS Award for a great, and that means GEMS is Greatly Enriched Mentor and Services, which Eloquent Essentials, we deal with jewelry, we deal with GEMS. And in me partnering with um, a, a few mentoring organizations, what I see is these organizations work hard to help the children. You know, they, they are creating this village approach to help be supportive, to help our children stay academically, educationally sound, to enrich their lives and so forth. And what I notice is sometimes as a single parent, a parent may not be able to you know, pay the tuition for their children to be involved or pay whatever money it is to support these things. So I figured it was only right that scholarship would be able to sow a seed into that. So that way, if there's a parent that couldn't pay for it, you know, this organization would be able to say, you know what, we got some extra money. We can cover that because we know Tasha or Mike, you know, they're good children. They're benefiting from this organization. So they would have the funds, so they have that. And I I was blessed to have two great organizations. One of them is Chinusa Bakari, which um which um excuse me, Chinusa Bakari, which actually helps young black boys. And this organization I watched this organization from inception and it's just like an amazing organization when I tell you. So like them they're based out of Brooklyn, New York. And then you have YL Track, which is based out of Connecticut, and they're geared towards helping young girls. So that's my give back. And like I said in the beginning, when I prayed for Eloquent Essentials, I told God, if you give me a gift and a talent, I'm going to multiply it. So he allowed me to multiply it through Eloquent Essentials, connecting with them, and then I birthed EEYSP. So I'm just doing God's work. Mm. That was long, right? <laughs> no, but you you're very thorough. See, that's that that business woman, that um that thorough, that quiet storm that I said earlier, you know how she was quiet, now she just all in dropping mics left, right and sideways. <laughs> <laughs> and you but you know, you set such an example cuz like I said, a lot of people start businesses, but to go over and beyond, not only start a business, but to start a scholarship is a powerful thing. 
you know, because we always could find a reason why not to do something. And let's be honest, a lot of people make promises to God that they don't keep. That is and you true. kept yours. Yeah, the, and, this I did. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the promise you kept. <laughs> so yeah. to find out. To find out more about the the scholarships, because I know you said 10 to 19, so I'm definitely out of the age group and area. What's <laughs> so the we- what, Yeah, I'm going to just leave it alone. Uh, what's the <laughs> website again? Okay, so to learn more about the organization, to apply for the scholarship, uh, to donate, where 100%, like, I don't make a profit off of this. The committee, we don't make a profit off of this. 100% of what we raise go to our youth. But to learn more information, to donate, or to apply, uh, you can visit www.eeysp.org. That's www.eeysp.org. P dot O-R-G. And, you know, it's outlined there. We're currently receiving applications, you know, up until May 18th. So if there's an organization that feels that, you know, this is a program that will benefit them, they can go on the website. They can look out what's outlined. They could apply. And if it's a young entrepreneur, I ask that you please uh direct them to the information because what what is important is you have to realize all of us pose um, intellectual genius, right? And mm-hmm. there are going to be some major companies that's going to see that you're going to be real smart and they're going to want you to come and work for their company, develop their company, drain all your intellectual knowledge out of your brains, and then when they're tired of you, they could – Fire you, but if you're establishing right. your own business <laughs> at a young age, can mm-hmm. you imagine how strong they would be when they mature? When they come, like if they're starting at ten, imagine them at twenty-one, mm. going to college. The college is the the, the extra, the icing on the cake because they already are learning right. and grooming, the, you know, grooming in the business and. And the program also, like, I also ask that if there's certain business owners, you know, that are really serious about partnering, mentoring, and helping these youth, you can also email us, you know, on the website because that's what it is. You have to partner up. So if you're mentoring, say you're a baker, you understand, and there's a child that won the award that they're a baker too. You're you're teaching them crafts. Maybe you have a business. Maybe you can bring them in as an intern. You know, maybe you could even hire them or pay them, you know, some money and help them. It's it's about working together, working together. No success is single. It's not. Mm. not, You're not going to be successful alone. So, yeah, that's that's my my passion. I'm very passionate about it, you know, and um, I'm thankful that God put it on my plate. You know, some nights I I lack sleep. You know, people see a lot of what's in the front. They don't see a lot of what's in the back. But Oprah Winfrey said something very important. She said, your legacy is how many lives you touch. Mm. So if I could touch a lot of lives through this scholarship program, be able to continue to – help my, you know, the legacy of my cousin, my cousin Adrian Pot continue, you know, continue to support these mentoring organizations, then I'm thankful because that one youth that started their business, oh, EEYSP invested in me when I first started. Nobody else believed in me, but EEYSP, yeah. they granted my business. Or I was in a program and I, my mom was going through some stuff. But God was able to bless the organization I was a part of, and I was able to continue on. So those are the mm. things you can't live selfish. You can't. It's not. It's not always about you. Like you, you can't be selfish. But yeah, wow. that that's me. Looking for everybody I, else, and I like I'm being a, quiet a, about it. 
I'm like, like I know, <laughs> I know my wealth. Like, like I want right. to have that Warren Buffett, that Oprah Winfrey. I want to have that type of money, but I, I want to be so behind the scenes because you can do a lot more sometimes from behind the scenes. Because when people know you got yeah. money, they come to you with the BS. You know, <laughs> oh, I need a hundred dollars. Got a hundred dollars in their pocket, but they need a hundred dollars. You know, be asking you for stupid stuff. So <laughs> yeah, that's why I say I'm on my so, Oprah so, stuff. So. <laughs> Which is what what we're about to talk about next. But I love the uh, low key billionaire aspect of it. Um, <laughs> which you know, I'm 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 all with that. I'm all with it. Low key, I'm hashtag low key billionaire. You only, exactly. you know. I'm just saying because I that's a, that's my goal. I'm writing it down, guys. I'm sorry, y'all know class is in session. Um, low key billionaire because I think a yeah. lot of people don't don't realize. And if um, you want to. I don't. If you look at um. Because if I'm not mistaken with Warren Buffett, he still lives in the house that he had way back in the day before he even had money. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and I and know. And that's why I was going to speak you. It's affordable. Because also, right. sorry, not to cut you off, but like even in mm-hmm. this business, like I've worked with celebrity stylists. I've worked with some 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 of these artists that be, you know, on these shows. And they come up and and. More often times that they be fighting, they don't be wearing mm. bling. They don't be, you you know, they be wearing stuff that you know is nice that they like. But because they on TV, you think they got all this money, you know? Right, it's, it's funny. It's real funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's real funny. Oh, I got stories, to yeah. read, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take the fifth and just be quiet on that and wait for the next conversation. <laughs> For the, for the next conversation, for the next, exactly. for the next, next <laughs> but but real but real talk though, when I have more money than I had ten, fifteen, twenty years ago, of course, um, and I was I spent way more money then, right? Like at at twenty twenty five, a young single parent, I spent way more. Like if I had the Money I spent on trying to look the part, then I would have, I probably would have been a billionaire. I don't know how much money I spent back in the day, but I I started working at thirteen. So, mm. but it was more important to quote unquote look the part. Now, y'all know I live in the country. Okay, mm-hmm. it is more important. Like, that stuff, like, is not important. Like, yeah, for the pictures, I look cute, you know, everything's put together and everything else, but I guarantee you this is one of the reasons why this is a radio show and not a Facebook Live show because I'm in the house very far from fabulous, okay, very far from fabulous. <laughs> so I'm just saying a lot of people get caught up in looking the part, um, but – it, it's not everything that, that you see. Please believe I don't walk around my everyday life with heels on, fabulous dresses, and, and the hair laid and makeup and everything else. So, you know, we got to focus on what's really important. Like if I wanted to look like that every day, yeah, I could afford it, but it's not important. And that's what the seductive. Because you're mastering you know? being you. You're mastering being Valencia. Right. You're not trying to master being somebody else. You're mastering right. being you. So that maturity has taught you that you have to invest wisely in different things. Like you can look good, but, you know, you have to also right. invest in yourself and make sure that and you're, your coaching is just and everything. Yeah, for sure. You and know? I don't even have yeah, I, know I, have I don't kids. even have they any biological them. children. I don't have biological mm-hmm. children yet. I'll say that yet, you know, um which could be another okay. story. <laughs> another show. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, but like, you know, I still do it for the children. Like my love, yeah. I love I love my elders and I love the youth. Those are like my two favorites out of people. 
And then, you know, the people that's my age, I kind of deal with them, you know, like, you know, either I'm going to deal with you or I'm not going to deal with you. I'll show you a level of respect, and I guarantee you're going to respect me, because if not, then right. we ain't fooling with each other. That's that's mm-hmm. that borough life. Um, that's <laughs> another show. So that's to Oprah. Because yeah. cause you did something, and when I saw the picture, I was like, oh, my gosh, where is she and why am I not there? So let's talk about your <laughs> Oprah-ish and that whole experience. So, oh, okay, man. where were you? Tell us a little bit about what happened with that. Okay, well, post. Post me meeting Miss Oprah Winfrey, um, you know, I had, like, I'm a big fan of her, and, like, usually when I host events, I make sure that, you know, everything's set and the table and all of that stuff is set up, like, as if I'm having the, um, the event that she had where she honored all of the women and stuff like that. So I mm-hmm. just love her. And so I had in the, it was December. I had did a, had a shirt made up on um, for me, and it says I'm on my Oprah, and then it has like the lips with the finger to the lips, and it's supposed to be sh- for sugar honey iced tea. People that know sugar honey iced tea know what that means. I'm not going to curse on the radio station. So yes, I and and my hashtags have been you know on my Oprah, and this hashtag that and private yachts, private jets, private everything, you know. And so I believe that, at, well, fast forward even further than that, last summer I was at work and I told my manager, I was like, my manager, my director, I was like, yo, I'm meeting Oprah Winfrey soon. They was like, ah, ah, ah. I said, okay, y'all keep laughing. Just like I told y'all. <laughs> You need to take my autograph now because when I leave here, I don't want you pulling my time sheet talking about, I used to sign my name next to us, you know, and they laugh, they laugh, they laugh. (laughs) Fast forward, a friend of mine called, which is a part of the eight, you know, Aloria, she called me, yeah, makeup artist extravaganza, the slayer and all of that. So she called and she was like, you're rich. You know, Oprah's going to be, da 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 And it was like a hush move. Like, she'd be on some A-list of lists, and she gets inside the stuff that, you know, the average person, it ain't yeah. being advertised. So I said, when she told me that, yeah. I was like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I'm going. So she was like, okay, I'm online. I ordered the ticket. Now I was like, come get your money today. I will be home this time. Come get it, right? So she came. And I was like, okay. So in that process, what I've learned is I didn't talk about it because what I learned yeah. is sometimes you ever have that feeling in your gut, like with God be telling you, be quiet, don't talk about yeah. stuff, because then people yeah. will try to disrupt yeah. the energy of where God is taking you, and you already yeah. spoke it into existence that you're going to meet her. So I said, okay. So then I said, all right, fine, no problem. So we went, whatever. So I was quiet. I was on my Oprah with the finger to the lips, not saying nothing. So we went up there. Before we left, I was in my house. So I said, God, you know what? God, I thank you for this opportunity, for lining this, for affording me the opportunity to be able to be in the presence, in the same atmosphere, to just hear her voice. I said, God, I don't put nobody above you. I just, you know, I'm thankful for this. So I went, you know, I did my little prayer, and I said, God, please allow me to be able to give her this gift. Let me put in my hand, in her, from my hand to her hand, the eloquent essential signature pendant. And I said, that was my prayer. Mm-hmm. And I said, I, and I thank you in advance, God, for making it happen. I went to my mirror. I took some red lipstick, and I wrote, thank you, God, meeting on Oprah. And I left my mm. house. We met Aloria. We went up to the Apollo. It was at the Apollo. She was doing her super soul conversation. We got up there. Got there. I was like, okay, you know, I'm thinking I'm I'm celebrity. So I'm like, no, I got to go downstairs because I know I go downstairs. That's where, you know, everybody's going to be. So they was like, nope, you on the lower mezzanine. We went upstairs. We were sitting right behind the exact following row behind her biggest sponsor of the event. 
So I was like, oh, mm. shoot. Oh, shoot. The camera's going to come on. They're going to see me because I'm part of the crew. So we was there. <laughs> Anyhow, the event went through, breaks. You know, they had did their intermission. They breaks with me and the Lord. Went downstairs. Pew. So we wind up slide to the left, slide to the right, crisscross. And now we on we in the ground floor, so we meeting people, talking, laugh, stuff like that. So then the opportunity came where you know it was the end of her taping and so forth. And no, before that, a lady was like, "Oh, okay, me and my friends are leaving, so y'all could sit in our seats." So I was, was like, "Sit, oh, oh, we official now. We on ground floor before it wraps up." Anyhow, mm-hmm. fast forward. Um. Oprah was signing autographs and stuff like that in the um, on the stage. So I said, I said, oh man. So I ran up there with my gift. You know, I'm like, okay. So there's like three girls in front of me, and I'm like, Miss Oprah, I got this gift for you. I want to pass it to you. And she don't hear nothing I'm saying. I'm like, it might as well have been a whisper, <laughs> no matter how loud I was talking. And I'm telling the girl, one girl, one girl going live. She she trying to film. You know, I'm like. The stage yeah. is all the way up here. Like, what are you doing? The other one trying to take a picture. I'm like, she's not even leaning in the picture. This is all in my head. You know, I'm being real nice. Yeah. And then the other person was actually talking to her. So I said, okay. She was like, okay, I got to go. I said, can you please pass this to Oprah? Pass to Miss Oprah, I got this gift for this. She didn't hear me. They looking at mm. me. They don't want to pass my gift. So you know what I said? Haters. They ain't bring nothing for <laughs> Oprah, so they don't want to pass my gift. So that was right. the first time. That was the first time. So she went off. I said, oh, man. I said, I ain't never going to it. Like, who gets that close to Oprah and not be able to hand off the gift? So then the Laura's right. like, sis, you're going to meet her. You're going to meet her. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to meet her. But you, you know how sometimes you have that doubt? you like, yeah, I'm going to meet her. Yeah. I'm going to meet her. All right. So then the stage cleared. Then the person from her production team came out, and they was doing whatever. So I was like, oh. She was talking to Oprah. She was giving Oprah water. She said, Miss, can you give Miss Oprah Winfrey this gift? I brought it here to give her. She was like, oh, I can't take it, you know. So I got upset, but I realized people pass stuff off to these celebrities. You don't know what's in the gift. You and right. passing right. it off to Oprah. So that was the, the second no. But remember what my prayer was before I left my house. I asked God yeah. to be able to allow me to give it from my hand to her hand. That was my prayer. Yeah. So now we leave in everything clear and everybody going out the front of the Apollo. So I saw two people. I saw like it was me and Laura saw like three people going out the back. So it's like, shoot, they going out the back. Let's, we ain't going to wait on the line. Let's go out the back. So the security was like, no, you can't go. Da, 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 da. We was like, we was just, oh, they're part of production. No, we saw them on the line. So he was like, hurry up. So when we go outside, I'm like, oh, shoot. So now you see, you know, it's nobody back there but paparazzi, which I later learned was TMZ yeah. and other bloggers. And there was, like, maybe four other people just standing around. So now I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. and it's raining. I said, oh, man, I'm going to meet Oprah. Yes, let me get my position. So you know how you have your 60-second pitch of what you want to say, and then when it yeah. happens, you don't know. So then Gail comes out. So I said, oh, shoot, I ain't going to see Oprah. But I know if I get this gift to Gail, her BFF, all will be good. Gail came out. Oh, this girl, how you doing? Hey, sweetie, how you doing? I'm doing fine. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Oh, thank you. So Gail done told me thank you, sweetie. All right. I said, Miss Gail, I've been trying to get this gift to Miss Oprah since the inside. She's like, sweetie. Give her two minutes. She's on her way out now. I said on her way out now. Wow. So that was the third. That was my third no. So I feel that when you pray, you know, Trinities, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, yeah. in my mind, I'm breaking everything down like a spirit, like a mathematical problem. So then, <laughs> next thing you know, I'm waiting. Miss Oprah comes out. <laughs> I was like, I admire the work that you do. I respect you as a woman. I just went into this whole thing. She is such a sweetheart. Oh, my goodness. So I was up close to Miss Auntie Oprah, and I was like, I've been trying to give you the gift from my accessory line, Eloquent Essentials. I also have a pamphlet of the work I do with the youth in here, and I really just want to give this to you. I hope that you like it. 
you know, happy belated birthday, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, thank you, darling. I was like, oh, shoot. Oprah said, thank you, darling. So she was like, thank you. I appreciate it, you know, whatever. Had a quick conversation with her. And I was thankful. So, you know, we're taking pictures. Gloria took some pictures with her. I took pictures with her. And then once we finished, that's when the um, paparazzi went to kind of turn the lights on. I didn't know Quincy Jones had went off on a tangent, so they was asking her questions about Quincy Jones. So I didn't know that. So I'm looking through my phone at the pictures. One of the pictures that I did take with her was kind of blurred. So I was like, Ms. Oprah, can I get another picture with you? She was like, girl, you know you're supposed to be selfie ready. So I felt like a BFF from Oprah because I was like, selfie ready. <laughs> oh, yes, she said so. Anyhow, I wound up leaning in to take a picture, but they had the lights, you know, whatever, and took the picture. And I'm thankful. So that was my first introduction. I said that's my introduction to her. She and I will talk about it and laugh about it later on because I know that she's going to wind up meeting me again. I'm meeting her again. We're going to sit at the table, and we're going to be talking certain things, and she'll be able to help me, and I'll show her how loyal you you I am as an individual, and I'm just happy for it. So that's just you speak things into existence. You keep God first, and you talk about it, and God will make it happen. Hashtag and that's amen. My Oprah. The, that's my Oprah I, I love it, and I could still hear the excitement in in your voice and the persistence. And you know, I'm honored to know you. And let me find out. You go sit down with <laughs> Oprah, and I'm not there. I will do a whole Facebook Live series of the Find You Radio Show. <laughs> now nah, I'm just playing, but maybe I am, or maybe I'm not. Y'all never know. So, um, Riz, you know, I love you to, to to the moon and back. You are such an awesome person. But as we wind down to find you radio, what is the one tip you would give to a woman that, you know, she wants to start a business, she wants to change the world, she wants to do something? Like what is the one tip you you would give her? I would give her the advice that I live by is to trust and believe in God uh, to first and foremost any idea that comes in your mind to ask God to guide you in the right way, to keep you focused, you know, have that conversation with God. And, you know, we have that gut feeling about how God's moving us, you know, and follow God's lead. Be obedient. Uh, when you when God starts walking you to your elevation and guiding you in whatever dreams, aspirations that it may be, be obedient to it, be committed to it. Don't allow distractions to get you sidetracked because that's just the demonic spirit trying to get you off of what God has anointed your path to be. You know, mm. don't worry about what the next person is doing because you have to understand that your walk is your walk, that sister's walk is that sister's walk, and you may not know what she went through for her level to get right. to be successful or to advance to where she is. So worry about you and be prayerful along the process and trust it and never, ever, 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 ever give up. You're going to come across mm. obstacles, but in those obstacles, look at them as learning lessons. Learn, See what you can learn from them. See what you can grow from them and allow that to be your testimony because God will advance you from whatever obstacle it is, and then you'll be able to use that as an example to another sister that may need advice from you. So pray to God. God be obedient to God's direction. Be committed to whatever it is that you that you're doing. Don't be all over the place, you know, in your thoughts and your visions, and just be consistent and master being you, not mastering nobody yeah. else. And and get you some some eights in your life, some people that will, some people or a person that uh, can touch and agree with you. That's Amen. my my two cents. 
Uh, Riz, how can the audience get in touch with you? What's the website for Eloquent Essentials and the scholarship? If you want to go ahead and drop that again, please. Okay. So for Eloquent Essentials, uh, Eloquent Essentials is www.eloquentessentials.com. Dot com. Our business line is 347-560-4442. That's for Eloquent Essentials. You can uh, find us mainly on social media. It's uh, Facebook. It's Eloquent Essentials. On Instagram, it's Eloquent Essentials. On Twitter, it's Eloquent Essentials. And then for the Youth Scholarship Program, it's um, <laughs> www.eeysp.org, and you can communicate with us via email or stuff through the website. And also you can follow us on Instagram um, at eeysp, <laughs> and then on Twitter it's underscore eeysp. And if you're in the... On a sidebar, if you're in the New York area and you're not doing anything for Mother's Day, we will be hosting a fundraiser initiative um, for Mother's Day on Mother's Day. Um, It's going to be also celebrating the essence of womanhood. It's going to be a great event. We have a beautiful host, Ms. Shea Miminger. We're going to have poetry. We're going to have music. You don't have to wait in those long lines to get a seat. Uh, the ambiance is going to be excellent. Poi by Velvet is our event coordinator and our premier caterer for the event. You know, you'll be able to get your sangria, desserts, and everything. And the tickets are only, if you buy a single ticket, it's $50. But if you buy two tickets, it will be $90. You get a $10 discount. And, again, the proceeds go towards EEYSP. None of it goes to my pocket, and I'm just, um, thank you, if you video. My name is Riz. You'll see me say hey, Um, and I look forward (laughs) to that event. You know, if you want to make a donation, $20 or whatever, you can go on that same website. And, um, yeah, that's how you can find us. Valencia, my sister, hashtag number eight, I am truly thankful and grateful for you affording me this opportunity to talk about EEYSP, talking about Eloquent Essentials, and just having a real comfortable conversation with you. You made it so easy, and I thank you. I love you, and I appreciate you for this. Uh, Don't make me blush on the radio, guys. I am actually blushing, okay? With that being said, all of the information for everything you heard to find out more about Eloquent Essentials, and the Youth Scholarship Program in which I am too old to participate in. However, Define You Radio, of course, will be making a donation. So um, it will be on Define You Radio's Facebook page. Guys, it has been a great show. Be inspired, okay? Obesity (laughs) keeps you complacent. That's like one of the many takeaways from tonight. And Master Being You, per my hashtag, 8 friend, Rizmia. So with that being said, pens and papers down, classes officially over. Make sure you are connected with tonight's guests and the show. Until next time, remember your past doesn't define you. It gives you definition. And what you do with that is up to you. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for listening to Define You Radio. Make sure you connect with the show at www.defineuradio.com. Pins and papers down. Class dismissed. Required listening with Amazon Music. Dad music again? The greatest guitarist of all time. Wait, who? Alexa, add this song to a new playlist. Sure, what's the new playlist name? Jack's intro to classic rock. Adding Stepping Stone by Jimi Hendrix to Jack's intro to classic rock playlist. 
Amazon Music, the simplest way to listen to the music you and soon he will love. New customers start your 30-day free trial at AmazonMusic.com. Renews automatically, cancel anytime.